so over here the next question is the next question that comes out is how do i identify the losses now when i talk about the losses there are two concepts which come in one is your lgd <clears throat> the other is your ead so lgd of the ied borrower and the ead of the ied borrower right okay so these are the two things that we have over here now the next point so the question that comes is that how do we use these two so how do we define these two to get to the loss from the is account right Okay, <clears throat> so now talking about the LGD of the IS account. So, so let, let's first try to understand what is this exposure at default and the loss given default. So, talking about the exposure at default. Exposure at default is, let's say, the that I I I have a credit card, right? Or let's say I have a personal loan, right? I've taken a personal loan of one lakh and I've been paying it back over the last few years. Suddenly something happens, I lose my job, my repayment capability goes down and I default, right? So over here, the most important part to understand is that how is it that I, I would have, or, or what is it that would be the exposure or the outstanding balance that I would have at the time when I am defaulting, right? So how is it that I would default? So this is the important question that we need to answer. So exposure at default gives you gives you the estimate of the amount that the borrower is that is outstanding with the borrower at the time of the default, right? So this is where your EAD comes into place. So EAD is the total balance which will be outstanding at the time of the default. Now. When EAD comes in, the next part that we have over here is that with EAD, now some amount of that EAD is recovered from the, to the recovery process. And the remaining amount which is not recovered is something which goes into loss. So therefore, the amount that is, uh, the unrecovered amount which has gone into loss is your loss given default right so we have two things over here so the three components over here first is the probability of default which gives us an idea about whether a borrower would default in the next 12 months or not or what are the chances of a borrower to default in the next 12 months so that's the probability of default that we have the next thing that we have is the loss given default right so what is the loss given default over here sorry the reason that we have is the ead of the exposure at default now the exposure at default would give us an idea about the amount outstanding at the time of default and from there a certain amount of the part uh, loss would of the exposure would be recovered and a certain part would go into your default so that is where you have your lgd or your loss given default okay so obviously just observe one thing 
but with LGD, right, you will have a recovery part associated with it as well. Right? So when we go into the, we deep dive into their mechanics, right, the mechanisms. So that's where we'll talk more about these parts. Okay. So talking about the loss given default over here, we're talking about the exposure default over here. So over here, when I talk about this, so so these are the three uh, broad components, right? Now let's uh, try to construct this and associate these figures with the loss. So we know that if I'm computing an expected loss, I need to have a probability of the loss, right? So EL. So EL is equal to probability of default right, into the loss. What is loss? Loss is the amount of the loss or the, or the, or the you know, the, the proportion of the EAD which has gone into loss. So out of the defaults, right, out of the exposure which was that a default, how much of it has been, how much of it has not been recovered, right? So the percentage is not recovered, the amount which is not recovered is your LGD or your loss given default the IA the individual or of the IA the account divided by the exposure at default. Or rather, let me put it like this. Let's put it like this, that this is the loss out of loss as a percentage of this exposure is your LGD. So the loss which has happened right, as a percentage of the exposure at default is your LGD. So Expected loss is defined as PD of the IAS account into the LGD of the IAS account. So there are these two core components. Now the question that comes out is then where does the AD go? Now, over here you see that this LGD that I have reported is a fraction because it is decided as a proportion of the law of the exposure. Right? So the PD that I have of the IAS account into the LGD that I have of the IAS account gives me my EL. But when I'm talking about an expected loss component, right? I need to report it in figures, in dollars, not as a fraction. So what I do is, so what I do is, so what I do is, I multiply this EL figure into convert into dollars. I multiply it with the exposure at default. I multiply it with the EAD over here. I multiply it with the EAD or the exposure at default. So basically, when I multiply it with the EAD figure, I convert it into a dollar value. Right. So the so finally my expected loss comes in is the probability of default into the loss given default into the exposure at default. And it is this expected loss, you know, which also is an unbiased estimate of the provisions that I need to keep aside. 
Okay, so is this uh, formula or uh, the formula for ex uh, expected losses clear? So as I was saying, uh, expected losses also provide an unbiased estimate for your provision, right? And it is this EL computation that we generally talk about when we talk about IFRS 9, when we talk about TCL and so on. So, so they, they have their other, you know, so computing those uh, EL figures are more aligned to the business of the portfolio or factors, right? So over here, what we are trying to essentially do is we are trying to compute the expected losses, right? With the probability of default loss given default exposure or default. So use the formula, right? And I'll try to and I'll connect the concept of this expected loss to the concept of unexpected loss and RWA. Let's, <clears throat> let's uh, to explain this concept of you know the risk weighted assets. So let's uh, look into this one. So basically, you know, your risk weighted assets are uh, nothing but it's an estimate of your unexpected losses. So how do you compute that? So from the PD, LGD, EAD, you will get an idea about the expected losses, right? So this part will give you an idea about the PD. LGD. Yeah. Right, so you have a PD, LGD, and EAD to compute the expected loss. But now, the expected loss plus the unexpected loss together will comprise of the expected loss plus the unexpected loss together will comprise of your value at this right so it will together it will comprise of the value at risk so now if we have the value at risk together we have the value at risk so, so the value at risk will give you idea that at 95 percent uh, like what is the you know so so what is the total value at risk that you have right so your el plus ul gives you your var at say let's say at 95 percent now obviously if you have if you can compute that var that the total var and from there what we do is we subtract the el so VAR gives you your total loss that you can earn, including your expected loss plus your unexpected loss, right? Let's say your VAR or your value at risk is 95% or I mean at 95% gives you your total loss, right? Which is your uh, expected plus your unexpected loss. Now, from there, if you can subtract the EL, right, what you will get is your UL or what you will get is, is your unexpected loss. Right. So this is the total uh, loss, which is EL plus the UL, right? So from there, if you subtract the UL, uh, EL, what you get is your unexpected loss. Now, the question that comes out is that how is this bar computed? What is this bar? What is this value at risk? Right? So I'll just. So the base. So we'll. I'll, I'll not be talking about you know value at risk in very details right at this point of time, right? I'll just talk about the very basic overview of value at risk. Right. So basically, it says that it is a measure that quantifies the level of financial risk within a firm, right? Within a given time frame. 
now what i want to understand so what is it that i want to understand through this value at risk what i want to understand through this value at risk is to determine determine i want to determine the extent and occurrence ratio of potential losses in my bank in my portfolio right so basically when i look into the var measure right i'm trying to assess that what is the total level of risk within my firm so it's a statistical measure which helps me do so this is largely used in market risk right so he tries to say tell me that what is the probability or what is the amount of loss which has or what is the probability that my loss would not exceed 95 percent or say at would not be exceeding a certain level uh certain specified level right so that's what value at risk is so so at a very high level this will give me an idea about the the uh, you know the level of financial risk within the firm so that gives me a total overall level of risk that is existed at a certain confidence interval at a certain level of confidence right so so what is the probability that the loss that i earn will not exceed this amount right or what is the loss which i may earn which is less than this amount at 95% confidence so that is how what bar talks about right so now over here uh what we are trying to do over so whatever we are trying to do is we are trying to fix out or we are trying to estimate an overall loss that the portfolio can earn subject to all its parameters now from there i compute the expected loss i subtract that expected loss and whatever i am left with is my unexpected loss and it is this unexpected loss that needs to be covered with the rwa right so it it better states over here so one measures var by assessing the amount of potential losses the probability of occurrence for the amount of loss and the time frame for example a financial firm may determine an asset has a 3% one month var of 2% so it says that in one month right the loss percent would not exceed Three percent, right? The chances of this event to occur is two percent. So I have two percent chance of earning losses less than three percent in a month, right? So this is how VAR is done, right? So it, it gives you an idea about the overall loss that can be earned. I'm not getting into that quant side of it right now, right? but this is what it does now if i have that bar from there i subtract my el what i get is my ul clear now once that unexpected loss is there right now that unexpected to estimate when I mean, once i have an estimate of the unexpected loss that unexpected loss is estimated using rw so your rwa is an estimate it's an unbiased estimate of your unexpected loss right so when you are computing your rwa or when you are computing your unexpected loss what are you actually computing is your risk weighted assets i'll take the formula right rwa basel to formula hmm. so this is a very good document right so when you, when we start with basel right an explanatory note on the basel to rwa weight risk weight functions right so this is something which can be uh, very useful for you 
so i'll share this even i you know the document that i uh, the graph and the document that i use for my reference is this one right so i'll just uh, share this link with you you can refer to this Ah, so this is your ASR framework, and this is where your computation of, you know, the capital requirement is, and this comes from the Blasius Morton model. When you develop your, uh, you know, you develop your uh, ASR framework, and from there you do the transformations, and you get to this part, right? But the question that comes out over here is, so I'll not be going into the definition of this. Or, or I'll not be going into the derivation of this right at this point of time. I'll come to it later, right? But right now, what we'll talk about is, we'll talk about the capital requirements. Or, you know, we'll, we'll talk about the role of this PDNZD EAD in this particular exercise, right? So over here, one thing you can see is that this capital requirement contains all these measures like it's a function of LGD. It's a function of PD, right? But so over here, what is this capital requirement? This is the total loss that the bank earns at a 99.9 .9 confidence interval, right? Or at a 99.9%. .9%. So this is the total loss or this is your value at risk. 